Never miss the news that matters to you. Follow WWAY on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Now, here's Chief Meteorologist Scott Dean with your WWAY Storm Track 3 AccuWeather forecast first. Well, one of the hottest days we've seen in recent memory, and it's only May as we made it into the low 100s in many areas of Southeast North Carolina, including the Wilmington Airport, making it up to 101, only three degrees cooler than the hot, the hottest high we've ever seen in the uh, city. And it looks like we're in for cooler weather on the way, but it's going to be a gradual process. We'll have the details coming up along with rain chances. WWAY News at 11 starts right now. This is the place for news that matters. You're watching WWAY News at 11. Now on WWAY News at 11, an officer involved shooting turns deadly. The latest information from police. Plus, the temperatures are soaring. We'll share the new dangers of leaving children in hot cars. Plus, what the Coast Guard says tonight after a pilot went missing when his plane crashed into the Atlantic Ocean. Thanks for joining us tonight for your news at 11. I'm Amanda Fitzpatrick. We're following developing news in Wilmington where a man is dead after an officer involved shooting. Our Andrew James is live near Pine Valley with more. Andrew. Yes, Amanda, it's still a very active scene here. Police have had John D. Berry Drive closed off for hours now. The State Bureau of Investigation has also swarmed the area. Multiple vehicles that you see behind me here, those are their vehicles. They all responded after that officer involved shooting took place. This all playing out around 7 this evening. That's when police initially got a shots fired call to a home off Owens Court. This is in the South Crossing neighborhood off South 17th Street. Police say when they arrived, a male suspect barricaded himself in a home with his wife inside as well. They say when he came out, he was carrying multiple firearms. Now, police asked him to put those weapons down and say he did not comply. Officers then fatally shot him. I heard from one neighbor who heard the police respond to the area after that shooting. Hovering over here when we were first riding and we rode around, we rode around through uh, Independence Mall area and back and uh, I was definitely not expecting to, uh, to hear this kind of story. It's definitely sad. Police have not made the suspect's name public, but say he was 62 years old. Now, Amanda, Wilmington police tell me three investigations are ongoing right now. One is the State Bureau of Investigation. Their work stand alone, and an internal review is also going on, as well as investigation into that initial shots fired call that brought police out here. I can tell you that two officers were involved in this, according to what police have told me. They're both now on paid administrative leave, pending the outcomes of these investigations, and that's all standard protocol for whenever an officer fires their weapon. For now, live in Wilmington, Andrew James, WWAY News. All right, thank you, Andrew. Now to a sweltering heat and a statewide campaign to prevent deaths in hot cars. New to 11, every 10 days a child in this country dies from being left in a hot car. Morgan Norwood has warned how high temperatures can get in a short amount of time. It seems like an unthinkable act, a parent leaving or forgetting their child in a locked car in the heat. But it happens more often than first responders say it should. This year we've responded to nearly 70 kids that have been locked in the vehicles here. Today, the Fayetteville Fire Department demonstrating the deadly dangers of leaving children and pets inside vehicles. Around 11 a.m., it was already in the 90s, but on the inside of their squad car, more than 150 degrees. Every 10 minutes, the temperature rises 20 degrees. Experts say just 10 to 20 minutes in those conditions can kill. I volunteered to sit in um, and, and just kind of get a feel and experience what it might be like for a small child who can't get out. The first 90 seconds were scorching. It is about 154 degrees inside this car. And I was sweating almost instantly, but by three minutes. Three minutes and 30 seconds, and I'm already starting to feel it. I'm kind of getting a little lethargic as well. I couldn't even get that word out. In that short amount of time, I had already started to feel the sweats, fatigue, and misery associated with heat exhaustion. But for children, the outcome can be much worse. It's that momentary distraction um, where parents leave the kids in the vehicle. They run into the store for just a few minutes. Um, but when they get, in the, get into a store, 
Um, you have lines are longer than anticipated, um, cash registers are down, and that momentary delay is can be fatal. So while I had the option of getting out, all right, guys, I could not take it. Inconvenience of EMS standing by. Kids trapped inside don't. Well, speaking of the hot temperatures, on average, more than 600 people die from complications related to extreme heat each year in the United States. That's according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. If you spend a majority of your day outdoors, it's important to identify the warning signs. Heat exhaustion happens when our body overheats. Signs include heavy sweating, rapid pulse, dizziness, fatigue, cramps, nausea, and headache. Heat stroke comes next. That's when our body temperatures rise to 104 degrees or higher. At this temperature, our brain, heart, kidneys, and muscles can also become damaged, leading to serious complications or death. New details at 11, crews suspending day two of their search for a missing teenage swimmer who was expected to come to UNCW in the fall. At the Eno Rock Quarry in Durham, they spent all day looking for 18-year-old Nick Brown. Josh Shepin has a story. Tonight, dozens filed into the United Methodist Church of Hillsboro. Family members, friends, and classmates of 18-year-old Nick Brown. Nick still missing after more than a day's worth of thorough searching at the Eno River Rock Quarry. Always ready to shake a hand, always ready to say hi, um, but but never the loudest person in the room. Nick just graduated from the Eno River Academy last week and was headed to UNC Wilmington in the fall. He also belonged to this church's youth group. There's always a temptation, especially in the midst of great tragedy and, and massive unforeseen accidents like this, to try to find ways to make sense of it. And um, what we do instead together is we, we gather together and we give thanks for Nick and for his family. There's just a lot of hazards for coming out here and swimming. It's not recommended for good reason. Law enforcement continued to warn others about the dangers of going into this popular swimming hole. Today, authorities brought in underwater drones and divers to comb the quarry. The circumference of the quarry is, it's a 60 acre piece of um, property, so it's 60 feet deep in its deepest section. I can't say enough uh, why it's important to just make sure you watch out for each other and really think about it. Should I jump in this water? Rangers say not only is this quarry dangerous to swim in, but inside state parks, it's illegal to swim in most areas, including this one. Authorities had extra people in there today trying to help lend a hand to find them. Tomorrow, though, Rangers from Jordan and Falls Lake will also try to help out. New at 11, they say acts of kindness throw out roots in all directions, and that's the case for the owner of this barber shop in Charlotte, who helped 14 students graduate from high school. Season Bennett saw a recent gesture by businessman Robert Smith. He covered student loans to an entire graduating class at, well, Morehouse College in Atlanta. Bennett realized that 14 seniors at East Mecklenburg High School in Charlotte could not pay their school fees. That would prevent them from being able to graduate. So Bennett reached out to the community. He raised $4,500, enough to take care of the problem. Kudos to him. Well, caught on camera, witness captures video of a plane experiencing some problems right before it crashes into the Atlantic Ocean. What we've learned from the Coast Guard tonight. And tornadoes are still causing miles of destruction across the U.S. We'll show you the devastating video of the damage it's leaving behind. And certainly the, a good place to escape all the uh, high Heat is uh, going to the beach as beaches have also been quite warm in the upper 80s to around 90. It looks like tomorrow is going to be no exception, but there are signs we're going to break this heat wave. Details after the break. Now, your WWAY Storm Track 3 AccuWeather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dean. Certainly a hot one out there. Temperatures making it well into the 90s, low 100s with a 101. The uh, Official high at the Wilmington Airport. I tell you what, we haven't been that hot in a long time. In fact, that 101 is only three degrees away from the hottest temperature we've ever seen at ILM. And it's only May, but there are signs we're going to see this heat wave begin to break. Looking at clear conditions out there, like we've seen the past several evenings, showing up on, at the port city from the battleship. And as we look at the weather headlines, one more day where we have a chance to break a record. And oh, by the way, this record goes 120 years, 21 years ago, back into the late 1800s. Pretty impressive. It does look like we'll gradually, and here's the word, gradually slow 
down or, or drop the heat over the next few days as rain chances gradually start to come up. Looking at a temperature of 83 degrees, this number's come up as well, up into the mid-60s, the dew point, the measure of moisture, and that makes it feel like 85 out there. We have a southwest wind around 13 miles an hour. Mild temperatures across the entire region where we're looking at 80s across the board. Here are those high temperatures, and Wilmington sticks out like a sore thumb. As you can see, the core of the heat is right over the eastern Carolinas down into Georgia, but this heat is starting to get squashed a little bit. We're starting to see the ridge begin to break down. But one more hot day and once again the same areas are seeing showers and thunderstorms and we've had tornadoes once again in some of these areas around Texas up into the Midwest into Iowa and those are the areas that have been under this active storm track because the trough in the west and the ridge in the east have not budged. That is going to be changing. Watch what happens. The ridge starts to break down and you see this area of orange. That's some energy in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's going to swing through and that may spark a shower Friday evening. Now we get into a northwesterly flow as the ridge perks itself across, perches itself across this, the uh, southern plains and a trough digs into the northeast. So we'll be in that northwesterly flow. That will allow our temperatures to come down. All right, looking at our pinpoint future cast model, very little chance for rain, I do believe, as we go into the afternoon. But things will start to change, some subtle changes as we go into Friday. You start to see maybe a few showers around this latest run is not as emphatic as earlier runs were and then would indicate that we may see some showers and this is the first time seeing this run this is showing more coverage on saturday than, we, than we've seen in the past so we may have to increase the chance for afternoon showers on saturday right now we have a slight chance all right temperatures tomorrow are going to be in the 90s in fact some of these readings are a little bit on the low side but we gradually see these numbers come down as we go into friday and that'll be the case on Saturday as well, although I think those uh, 80s you're seeing there on Saturday are also a little bit low, but the trend is headed in the right direction. All right, little change tonight. Temperatures in the 70s, probably some areas only dropping into the upper 70s. Southwest winds continuing to blow. More records could fall tomorrow. Plenty of searing sunshine. Highs in the upper 80s to around 90 near the beaches, but I think the inland areas will have no problems touching the upper 90s. The uh, record is 96 set way back in 1898. And there we go with those temperatures slowly falling through the period on our AccuWeather forecast. By the time we get into Sunday and Monday, we're actually going to feel normal or average. <laughs> what does normal average, feel like? It's been so hot. Average is a good thing, right? It's hard, to, it's hard to remember what it feels like to be normal. You're right. You're right. We could use some more rain too. And I know we've been talking about these tips about keeping your pets out the car, mm -hmm. your kids, and even yourself. I mean, it is so hot outside and it's so dangerous inside those vehicles right. uh, for our little furry friends. And I've seen mm -hmm. twice now people still having their pets in the car. In fact, when I'm walking out on my deck, the, the deck is so hot mm. that you got to watch their paws because they right. can get burned. So and our feet too, and the sand was hot Saturday mm -hmm. and Sunday. So that's right. All right, guys, stay hydrated. Thank you so much, Scott mm -hmm. Dean. Well, new details at 11 for two weeks. Deadly storms have wreaked havoc across the U.S. Right now, Linwood, Kansas is dealing with the aftermath of a powerful EF4 tornado. Karen Kafa is on the ground in Kansas with the latest. It sounded like a freight train going over. I just feel my house coming apart. 32 miles of devastation in Linwood, Kansas, after an EF4 tornado with 170 mile per hour winds ripped homes and businesses from their foundations. <laughs> oh my God, it's huge. The twister on the ground for nearly an hour. And I had a seven by 14 foot trailer back here and we still don't know where it's at. I felt like some hail or something and my husband looked up and he said, well, we don't have a roof anymore. There hasn't been a day since May 16th that the U.S. hasn't seen a tornado on the ground. From Oklahoma to New Jersey, there's been relentless devastation from violent storms for 14 days. That's a tornado. Now, Texas is the latest state to get hit. This tornado caught on camera outside of Dallas Wednesday evening. This is the first time ever that we have had all of our emergency support function leads inside the EOC. Historic flooding has killed at least one person in Arkansas. States of emergency have been declared in Oklahoma, Kansas, Iowa, Ohio, and Arkansas. Despite losing everything, one survivor says he's just grateful he's still alive. We're all right. My dog's all right. My wife's all right. This all, all this could be replaced, you know. In Linwood, Kansas, I'm Karen Kafa. 
Noon 11, the Coast Guard suspended their search for a missing pilot tonight, which began when a single engine airplane was seen crashing into the ocean just before noon today, right before the crash uh, into the ocean. Marie Jacqueline captured the moment the plane veered into the water. The small private plane went down off of Cape May Beach. That's in New Jersey. The owner of the plane says the male pilot was a regular customer who flew recreationally. No word on what caused that plane to crash. Ashton Kutcher heads to court why he's testifying in a murder trial and the regret he's been carrying for more than a decade. And in sports, New Hanover Baseball is on their way to a third state title. We will hear from the Wildcat players and coaches. New at 11, Ashton Kutcher took the stand today in the trial of an alleged serial killer called the Hollywood Ripper. Kutcher testified in front of a packed courtroom where no cameras were allowed. Chris Martinez was there and has more from Los Angeles. For the first time, Ashton Kutcher spoke publicly about the night his friend Ashley Ellerin was murdered in her Hollywood Hills home. He testified for about 40 minutes Wednesday in the trial of 43-year-old Michael Gargiulo, the air conditioner repairman accused in the brutal killing. Kutcher said he and Ellerin were scheduled to go out on their first date on February 21, 2001, the night she was murdered. He told investigators he was running late when he went to the 22-year-old's home and knocked on the door to take her to a post-Grammys party. During opening statements, prosecutors described the scene. Mr. Kutcher looked in the window and saw what he thought was spilled wine on the floor. We believe now the evidence will show that was actually blood. Investigators believe Gargiulo attacked the fashion student from behind when she got out of her shower. Kutcher testified he left when Ellerin didn't answer her door. He assumed she was upset and departed without him because he was late. Ellerin's roommate found her the next morning brutally stabbed to death. Prosecutors describe Gargiulo as a methodical and systematic killer. He's accused of attacking at least four women, three in California and one in Illinois. Two of his California victims, including Ellerin, died. Gargiulo's attorney says his client is not guilty of killing anyone. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. The trial is expected to run six months with as many as 250 witnesses taking the stand. Noon 11, in happier news, George and Amal Clooney are offering a double date at their villa on Lake Como in Italy for one lucky person and friend who donates to the Clooney Foundation for Justice via omas.com. Now, the winner will have lunch with two-time Oscar winner George and wife Amal, a world-renowned human rights attorney. The CFJ advocates for justice through accountability for human rights abuses that are happening around the world. Well, sports is next on WWE News at 11. A Snead's Fairy Boy had his dream come true yesterday with his favorite NFL player by his side. Coming up, sports director Tanner Barth has their story. Welcome back, everyone. Well, the football season is right around the corner, but it's time to meet the newest member of the Carolina Panthers. Peyton Raper is an 11 year old from Sneeds Ferry who is battling a rare and aggressive form of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yesterday, though, he got the chance to hang out and meet with many members of the Carolina Panthers. Thanks to make a wish his running back Christian McCaffrey was Raper's host and he showed him around the Panthers downtown Charlotte Stadium and despite the heat, CarolinaPanthers.com reports that Peyton was in good spirits the entire time, never skipping out on a drill, and his energy both on and off the field seemed to rub off on the Panthers too. Oh man, it makes me feel so great. I can't quit taking pictures. I can't quit smiling, springing tears to my eyes, and you know, he, he deserves it. He's such a great kid, and for him to go through what he went through and to come out as strong as he is and he deserves everything he asked for, and that's, you know, what we're going to try and, you know, do for him. Peyton's parents, as you saw right there, thrilled that their son gets the chance to take part in such a special day. And speaking of football, the high school season just around the corner, and teams are starting to finalize their coaching staffs for 2019, and there'll be a new face in charge of Heidi Trask. It was announced late last week that the Titans had hired Brandon Proctor as their new head football coach. After Jonathan Taylor announced his 
stepping down in his resignment earlier this year and earlier this spring. How about this? He was an assistant coach and defensive coordinator was Proctor at a lot of high school in South Carolina last year in 2018. The Titans went five and six their overall record and we all know that a dynasty can't be built overnight, but the past three seasons it sure seems like the new Hanover baseball team is well on their way to accomplishing just that. It was just one swing of the bat on Saturday night that sent the New Hanover Wildcats to the state championship series for the third straight year. It took everything the Wildcats had after falling behind one to nothing in the eighth inning, but if we know one thing about New Hanover, they're resilient. You know, we had to stay focused, you know, even being down one nothing there at the end, you got to stay calm, cool, and collected, and you know, still battle and put up one run there, and then eventually we got that second run, which was huge to get the win. New Hanover has 11 seniors on this year's roster, and they've compiled a 93-16 and record over their four years of high school, and now they're looking for their second state title to go along with it. It's been really great to just, you know, kind of end it on a high note, and we're going to try to get the state championship this weekend, but it feels like the past three years for us seniors, it's been kind of a continuous ride, and we're just trying to get that last one. The only thing standing in the way of the Wildcats pulling off back-to-back -back state championships is Marvin Ridge High School. The Mavericks are the number 10 seed in the state tournament, but New Hanover knows no one can be taken lightly this time of year. If you don't bring it, man, they're going to they're gonna send you home with an L. I think the guys have done a great job of, of, of playing with uh, focus and passion every time out, you know, and it's, uh, it's a testament to them. The year's been full of excitement for the Wildcats. Now they say it's time to put a bow on it. I mean, we've had a crazy playoff run this year, won some really big games. I mean, there's nothing that we want more than just to win one more. Wildcats will look to do just that. And last but not least, we can't forget the NBA Finals start tomorrow night on WWAY ABC as the Golden State Warriors take on the Eastern Conference champions, the Toronto Raptors, north of the border. NBA countdown will be on at 8.30. Game one will tip off at 9 o'clock from Toronto. And the Golden State Warriors looking for their Fourth NBA title, Amanda, how about this, in the last five seasons? Oh, my goodness. I'm over it. <laughs> a little bit. Can't anyway. be one of those. <laughs> okay, so what is the last time a team went on a similar run to the Warriors? <laughs> well, you, when you look at it, Amanda, you have to go back, but not too long ago. Mid-2000s, maybe, with oh, the yeah. San Antonio Spurs, That's Los cool. Angeles Lakers. The Lakers, though, not so great as of late, but... That was the last time. Should be a good series between these two teams. I'm not a Kobe fan either. I know people are going <laughs> to hate me for that. I'm not a Lakers fan. I did like with San Antonio, and those guys were, you know. Doing their thing. Except for they beat the Mavericks. I'm a Dallas fan. I know. Okay. <laughs> Just send it to <laughs> All right. Well, Scott Dean has a final look at your weather after the break. All right, we start off like we've started the past several mornings, quiet and mild with temperatures in the 70s, but a rapid warm up into the low 90s by lunchtime and then into the mid 90s. Some areas inland could make it into the upper 90s and our high, record high is 96, set all the way back in 1898. So we got a good chance to break that. Highs in the upper 90s and then a slow gradual descent as we get back down into the 80s by next week and it's going to be nice to feel those 80s and maybe a, a little better chance for a for much needed shower or storm over portions of the weekend. Absolutely and as you know uh, we had this story first broke at 10 o'clock and we have an update to you. We're still following developing news in Wilmington where a man is dead after an officer involved shooting. This is all uh, began around 7 this evening when police responded to a shot fired call off Owens Court. This is in the South Crossing neighborhood off of South 17th Street. Police say when they arrived, a male suspect barricaded himself in a home with his wife inside as well. They say when he came out, he was carrying multiple weapons. Police asked him to put the weapons away. They say he did not comply. Officers then fatally shot him. Police have not made the suspect's name public. They only are saying that he is a 62 year old man. Please tell me, though, also that two officers were involved. They are now on paid administrative leave pending the outcome of the investigation. And we do want to say that uh, they always do that whenever there is an officer involved shooting. That is part of protocol. We'll have more on this story coming up on Good Morning Carolina. You're watching ABC on WWAY TV3.